we really have a, a global audience this evening here, at least in, in this evening in Shanghai, and people from really all, all across continents. So thank you very much for joining us. We'll be taking the next 45 to 50 minutes to give you a quick, uh, well, I wouldn't say that quick, but a brief uh, presentation and session about the Seeds MBA, uh, and then also give you some uh, room for asking your own questions. So if any questions come up during the this um, uh, webinar, just feel free to send them to me by written chat, and I'll try to get to them either during the presentation or we can reach them to the end. My name is uh, Roy Chasen, Marketing Director for the Seeds MBA uh, based out of Shanghai. And for the next uh, hour, we'll be talking a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, questions that you may have for yourself. Uh, is it the right time for me to do an MBA? Um, and if I'm doing an MBA with so many options out there, why should I be looking at, uh, at China or Shanghai? Where should I be considering uh, doing my uh, graduate business education? And what type of possibilities or op opportunities can I expect after I graduate? So these are all legitimate uh, questions that most uh, young professionals have when considering when and if to do an MBA. For the next uh, hour then, I will take um, um, you know, uh, some time to explain to you a little bit about the, the IBS, what we're all about, what can you expect from the program, a little bit about what type of um, opportunities there are for both Chinese as well as international students, um, depending on where you come from and what uh, career background as well as industry you come from, you're looking probably for different things from an MBA. So whether you're from a sponsored company, family business, you're looking to be an entrepreneur, whether you come from the US, Europe, Latin America, or whether you come from in China, you all have different uh, priorities as well as um, different, I think, uh, demands from the MBA, and you're going to be paying a lot of money, so you want to be sure that you're making the right decision, which is normal. So let's uh, let's get going and, and rolling and talk a little bit about what the IBS is all about. Uh, most of you here probably because you've heard some people are saying my voice is light, so I will try to speak a little bit clear. One moment, please. Okay. Hope you can hear me well, Jason. Um, CIBS is ranked uh, essentially number one by Asia uh, in the recent FD rankings as well as Business Week. We're the leading uh, business school in the region if you look at their uh, 2015 rankings. MBA has moved up in FD uh, to number 11, which is quite a quite a feat. And the uh, EMBA program, we've been uh, globally ranked for the last uh, three years in a row by FT at number 10 in the world. Considering that most of our competitors are schools like Harvard, Wharton, uh, Kellogg, London Business School, schools that are much older than us, uh, I think it, it's quite an amazing uh, uh, feat. We recently just celebrated our 20th anniversary, and CIBS has been able to essentially um, uh, rocket through the rankings and be one of the world's leading uh, business schools, and I would say leading global business schools. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, you might be asking yourself, uh, what is it the right time for me to do an MBA? And if I want to do an MBA, what type of MBA uh, should I do? We don't have too much time to talk about it, unfortunately, in this session, but I would just say that the MBA and the full-time MBA is, is very different than any part-time program or online program. It really is designed for those people who feel they've reached the ceiling at their current job. Uh, we'll talk about it a bit later, but normally uh, average student comes with around five years of experience, although the minimum is two years. And then, um, you know, you have to ask yourself, is it time for me to make the next step, make the leap both in terms of responsibility, function, Around 85% of our students do uh, make a career switch. That means they change either industry, function, uh, or region, or a combination of any of those. So for um, those people doing a full-time MBA, they want to make uh, definitely a career breakthrough. For many people who are coming outside of China, it's, uh, they want to obviously know a, a brand new region and get familiarized with the world's, so what I would say is the most important and, and largest uh, market. 
And um, in addition to that, it's uh, time for you to also transform yourself from a, I would say, more soft skills and personal perspective. It's the time to take uh, a time out from your job, from the normal routine, uh, from what you've been used to for for a while, and then uh, be with one of, I would say, the, the most uh, uh, global um, environments and one of the, I would say, leading and most ambitious um, young professionals you will find here in Asia and even even globally. Uh, and this is a, a very unique opportunity. I've done a, a full-time MBA myself uh, 10 years ago. I'm still in touch with most of our, uh, most of my ex-colleagues, uh, alumni, friends from the MBA. You do weddings together. You do uh, births together. Um, and because the friendships and the bonding that occur during such a uh, intensive program, whether it be at any any school, any uh, top tier school, is quite unique and it's quite, I would say, one of the top and most memorable experiences of your life. And it, it definitely, by all uh, measures, changes your life. And that's why I would encourage you to speak to our students, to speak to our alumni, both in our program as well as other programs, and do the due diligence so you can uh, make sure that the decision that you make, whichever school it is, is the right decision. And I think any school that's, uh, you know, um, a leading school will be more than happy to present you with all the alumni uh, that you need to get in contact with or all the students so you can make an informed and the right decision. So after you decided that, uh, yes, I'm interested in the full-time MBA, I'm interested to both to make that career shift and, and transform myself personally to, to more leadership positions, uh, then you have to ask yourself, where do I want to do my MBA? And then obviously from CIBS perspective, we want to encourage you and we believe that for your career, uh, China makes a lot of sense. Whether you're uh, Chinese and you're perhaps thinking about doing uh, your MBA in the U.S., in the next uh, minutes, I'll talk a little bit about the advantages of, of staying in China and going to a global program in China that has with globally leveraged uh, partners internationally. And um, whether you're an international student, we'll talk a little bit about uh, why uh, it com makes sense to come to China and Shanghai as a global city versus doing your MBA in other places in the world. So just one moment, please, while I fix something here. Okay. So I'm back. Uh, why China? So we're in the world's fastest growing economy, and many people right now are talking a little bit about the slowdown of the BRIC economy, um, the U.S. Uh, economy getting back on track. But let's not forget that the Chinese economy for this year, with all the slowdown, is still at at seven seven percent uh, growth rate, which is uh, very enviable. I would say among so many European economies, where Europe uh, is uh, set to grow about. Uh, 0.5% this year under many estimates, uh, and these are the countries that are not, not in negative growth, as well as the U.S. is estimated, uh, I would guess, around 2 to 3% growth this year. So uh, we're still talking about uh, far higher growth than most economies in the world. And if we look over consistently, China has been for the last 30 years in the double-digit area, and still many regions uh, in Western China, the, I would say the less developed regions, are, are experiencing double-digit growth. So there's still many opportunities and the possibilities to grow in Chinese companies uh, or multinational companies doing in China uh, are really still unprecedented. Uh, the velocity of change in China as well as the scale of possibilities are, I would say, unprecedented in any other economy. And that's why many young professionals wouldn't consider uh, coming to China are thinking that they will have more opportunities to grow, more opportunities to share more responsibility and to lead teams, more opportunities to share their very, um, I would say, uh, special skills because of this thirst for talent. So um, that's, you know, what the main aspect of, of why China. Uh, also, uh, you know, many of you that live abroad may not be completely um, – I would say aware of what's going on here in e-commerce. So companies like Alibaba and Tencent are now have uh, valuations or Baidu uh, equal to their Western counterparts, whether it's um, it's uh, Google, Amazon, 
Uh, these companies are, are doing business in, in similar numbers or even greater. The exposure for e-commerce and development of an e-commerce infrastructure here is, is almost unprecedented. And things that are happening in China, uh, China is actually surpassing a lot of uh, things that have gone in the West. For example, um, many cities here are now foregoing the establishment of, of many retail chains uh, in bricks and mortar and are going directly to, to online. So that means there are uh, things are changing all the time, and we'll talk a little bit about later about what's going on with Tencent and the recent Innovate China competition, where Tencent is holding uh, uh, a case competition for students and students from universities like Stanford and Harvard all around the world. So we'll talk a little bit about this amazing change and, and transition that is is happening here. I talked about you know the opportunities to catapult your career in a region where most companies are are still growing uh, extremely fast, and an opportunity for you to differentiate yourself by on the one hand, if you're Chinese, having a very much a global English education in one of the top tier universities while keeping your China network, and if you're an international student, you have the capability of, I mean, we're talking about um, MBA education becoming increasingly commoditized. So unless you're you're going to Harvard Business School where that brand is, is recognized internationally, you need additional facets to differentiate yourself in the market. And having a China experience in China education clearly differentiates you in the market, both at home and in Asia, clearly because most uh, multinational companies and even SMEs today in one way or another, are involved in China. So they're either buying from China, they're selling into China. Uh, many Chinese companies now are buying Western companies. Many uh, Chinese and Western companies are merging China and it strives to um, to innovate and increase, um, I would say, its presence in the value chain from a uh, low-cost factory of the world to a higher-cost labor market where they need to innovate and to grow faster and expand internationally will require international talent and Chinese talents with an international global education. So this is the clear uh, value proposition that this offers you to clearly differentiate yourself and to have a global top tier education comparable to any school like Wharton, Harvard, London Business School that have this point of differentiation where you're knowing and you're understanding the world's most, I would say, complex market and uh, largest market and definitely one of the most uh, fastest growing and most interesting markets. Okay. And uh, clearly, if you're abroad or even if you're in China and looking to work in, in overseas markets, these will help you um, make that bridge between China and the world, and that's essentially the goal of the, of the MBA program. So I hope that's clear of why China. And then if you decide to come to Asia and to China for your MBA or stay in Asia, for your MBA instead of going to the U.S. and Europe, you you probably want to ask yourself why Shanghai. Uh, you know, some of the I would say some of the former glory of the Asian cities, such as Singapore and Hong Kong, is still dazzles many applicants, and and many think that uh, you know Singapore and, and Hong Kong are still Asia's international cities. And while those cities definitely have their merits, I would argue that the big potential. And this is one thing that I would uh, definitely have you think you deep consider when looking at your MBA is not at the present or the past, but looking at future trends. So where will um, the city where you uh, want to do your MBA, where will it be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? You know, what are the trends that are happening? And I would argue that Shanghai is clearly becoming and differentiating itself as Asia's, uh, the heart of Asia, both from a commercial and even cultural point of view. So the city is, just because of its rapid pace and the proximity, obviously, in the world's largest market, is gaining increasing importance. Some of you may also know about the uh, free trade zone that uh, was recently launched in the city, which will slowly liberalize a lot of the restrictions in, in trade and finance in Shanghai, eventually making it a much more open market. Um, and I think it's very important to note that many uh, multinationals in the last decade or, or two have moved from Hong Kong and Singapore and other uh, ports of call around the world to Shanghai for the clear reason that Shanghai uh, is in the back door of the world's largest market. So all the big multinationals, whether in healthcare and retail, uh, whether in the services sector, need to be here to understand 
the market and the intricacies of the market to understand obviously the language, the culture. Um, I think I want to mention one more thing that if, if you talk to anyone who says they're a China expert, you can ask them again because uh, I would say there's very few experts in China because China is, is, is changing all the time. So if you haven't been here for a year or two, you probably don't know what's going on, at least in the world of business. And it's it's very important to be here and to observe this firsthand. And if you're not here, to have the network to be able to uh, to connect, uh, you know, via remote to China when you go back to your home country or to a third country. So Shanghai is truly a global city. And for those of you who have been here, you know the attractions of the city. And for those of you who haven't, um, I would say China definitely has a lot of merits in terms of quality of life. Many of you have heard of, of the pollution issues in China, and, and that's very true. There are, are problems with pollution. But if you compare it to Beijing and other interior cities, Shanghai has a relatively decent air quality most of the year. There are some, I would say, bad days. But in general, the city is extremely clean, very safe, one of the safest cities in the world. You can walk uh, almost anywhere, any time of night, or take a uh, relatively taxi anywhere, any time of night or day. Um, very clean metro, efficient, um, and the, the city's changing all the time, the infrastructure is improving all the time. So from a personal, I think, um, uh, point of view in terms of quality of life, entertainment, uh, you will find that uh, Shanghai has a lot to offer. At SkyBS, we're located in an international community of expats. And to be very honest, uh, very often when I walk to the um, international supermarket here. I overhear a lot of the expats that work here. Many don't want to go back home, whether it's the U.S. or Europe, and they want to stay here because there is uh, quite a comfortable, um, I think, life-work balance, and most people here are, are not only happy from a professional point of view, which I think uh, Shanghai is probably one of the most exciting cities from, from a career point of view, but they're also happy from a quality of life point of view. There are um, people from almost every nationality located here, and what's very interesting, unlike uh, I think cities like New York or London, the most of the um, international um, professionals you'll meet here are very high caliber. So the people that are here are people that are in management positions, that are country directors, uh, have their own businesses. You're talking about people of, of I would say, the creme of the creme of the business world from almost any country across the world are here in Shanghai. And this is different than other global cities, and I think it's a big advantage when you think about networking and getting to know your surroundings. So that's a little bit of Shanghai, and then you have to ask yourself if, if you've decided on to bet for China in, in being part of your career, um, or and then you've um, thought about Shanghai as as the logical city within Asia, then why why CIBS? And again, there are some options in China and other uh, parts of Asia. There are some very good schools in Asia as well. But if you, you've decided on China and, Shen, uh, and, and Shanghai as uh, an opportunity, then Thebes obviously, I would say, is the best option because of the ranking and because of, I think, uh, the following reasons that we'll discuss. Okay. So um, first of all, student body, we're definitely the most global student body out of any business school in mainland China. So just current last year, we have, uh, we have 21 countries represented, normally between 20 to 25 countries represented in each intake. We have uh, close to 170 students divided into three different sections, and over 46% this uh, current intake have, been, uh, have come from overseas. So you can see that on the one hand, you get uh, exposure, whether you're Chinese or an international student, to a very large and diverse Chinese student body that are connected to different parts of China and different sectors, while on the other hand, uh, still uh, working in very diverse teams from people coming from Latin America, North America, Africa, Europe, and uh, Asian countries like Korea, Japan, and India, and Southeast Asia as well. The average age of our students uh, is 29, uh, although the range can go from anywhere around 23 to 35 years old. Uh, we ask for a minimum of two years full-time work experience, that's uh, a mandatory, and up around 10 years of work experience, I would say, would be the maximum. Normally, if somebody had a little bit, uh, if um, people normally have about a little bit more than 10 years of work experience, we'll encourage them to uh, do the uh, global or consider the global executive MBA. 
So uh, once you understand that we're probably one of the most, I think, global and high caliber uh, business schools in body, it's also important to look at the faculty, and this is also a strong measure for our, our rankings. At CIBS, we uh, recruit in the global market, like all global top tier schools, and this is different than schools that recruit uh, locally. So our professors come from the best and leading business schools worldwide. About one third uh, come from North America, another third from Europe, uh, Africa, and Asia, and uh, another third from China. So you have a very diverse group of professors. They're all with uh, PhDs. All our full-time professors, unlike uh, many other business schools, especially here in Asia, which have fly-in professors, most of our full-time professors um, are people that live here. Uh, they consult here. They do their research here. So they know a lot about China. And this is where our motto, China Death Global Breath, uh, comes from, right? The, you'll get a global perspective in the classroom from people, from professors from over 15 countries, you'll be with students from over 20 to 25 countries, and the case discussions and the dialogues that you have both in the teamwork as well as in the classroom itself and the other activities is what makes the, this a truly global MBA program. And on the other hand, many of the cases you'll be focusing on are very much China-focused cases. So these are multinational companies that are doing business in China with all the complexities of doing business here or Chinese companies that are increasingly uh, globalizing and wanting to grow abroad and finding different challenges to do that. So you'll be studying those aspects, and I can guarantee you that wherever you're located in the world, um, these China-related issues will affect the companies and the careers that, uh, that, will, um, that you will want to go into in the future. Um, so after we talked a little bit about the body and the professors, uh, let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. So we have an option of 18 months and a 12-month program. Initially, many potential candidates come to the 12-month program because it sounds like, okay, well, I can get back to work as soon as possible and, and time is money. But I would highly encourage you to look at, at the longer programs, whether our school or other schools, uh, whether they be 18 months or uh, 24 months. Because the, the longer programs do have give you more opportunity to integrate into your environment, to make connections, to actually the experience, to have some time for self-reflection, and to also do the, the proper and take the proper time to, to study your career options and to develop your social skills or sorry, your soft skills and your uh, interviewing capabilities and so on and so forth, and as well as uh, do an internship and an exchange. And believe me, because of the intensiveness of these full-time MBAs, uh, time just flies. So before you know it, you start the program, the program is over after 18 months. Uh, if I still haven't convinced you, the 12-month program, we do encourage more for people that are uh, either coming from sponsored companies and are going back to their job immediately after graduation, either want to start their own business or going back to a family-run company. And those are people that will less need the the um, resources given by our career services to look for a job. So this is essentially the, the big differences. And um, and uh, between the, the, the different programs, and I would say that also the 18-month program gives you an option for a longer uh, internship as well as, uh, as exchange opportunities, which we'll uh, talk to in a moment. Uh, well, somebody's uh, saying here we should talk more about Shanghai and North Steve. So if you have any uh, question about Shanghai, please uh, send them to me. I'll be glad to answer them to you uh, at the end of um, at the end of this forum uh, to the public, of course. So this is uh, a little bit about the difference between the 18 and 12 month program. It we have um, a possibility to do an integrated uh, application, which means essentially a little bit of what you have in the class, and that's combined with different projects. You have a consulting project called the ICSB, which is essentially a consulting project where you take what you learn in the classroom and you integrate it into a consulting project where you work in teams for different either multinational or Chinese companies, and this is done uh, during uh, the first year. You obviously learn about the critical management uh, skills, uh, both through the ACE methods that we use, as well as the, uh, the team um, the team activities, we have a leadership workshop uh, during the first uh, week of the school uh, when you're starting the first year. 
uh, during the first year, you'll also be exposed to all the different fundamentals. Uh, so that means um, the core courses like strategy, marketing, uh, accounting, finance, uh, those are obviously all uh, exposed to, and the international exposure to the overseas electives as well as summer internship and then exchange opportunities. Uh, I'll, I'll take a bit to, to stop uh, and to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the different uh, opportunities and answer your questions. One of our viewers is asking about the uh, FTZ, uh, the, the uh, free trade agreement, and the um, and the free trade zone in Shanghai. And um, that's a fair question. I think uh, the free trade zone is still a bit in, up in the air, right? I mean, we know that uh, Shanghai is uh, in the government's priority to be uh, slowly liberalized, both in finance as well as trade regulation. There's a big F uh, free trade zone open nearby to near the port of Shanghai, which is not far from the school. And slowly you're seeing the liberalization of different industries. So, for example, if for you that come from uh, finance, uh, for example, uh, hedge funds were completely um, you know, illegal here in China only a few years back. And uh, in the last two or three years, I'm not an expert in the area, but uh, the Shanghai uh, government uh, opened what's called a hedge fund park, which is a, a building in central Shanghai, which is essentially just dedicated to hedge funds. And this essentially means that, that you know, this is a brand new market opening. Um, and, and for those that are taking the new opportunities to get there, uh, there's, there's enormous opportunities for growth that are, are not found in more mature markets. And one of our alumni actually from the U.S., has gone to work one of these hedge funds as well as we supply several uh, students in internships with uh, different hedge funds here in, in Shanghai. And this is only one uh, example of many. So again, the, the future of the FTZ is not clear exactly on how quickly the reforms will be done or will take place, but the direction is clearly there. And whether Shanghai will be the financial hub of Asia within 5, 10, uh, 20 years, again, this is open to debate. But the direction is that again we're talking about, I would say one of the, definitely the most one of the most global cities in the world, uh, one of the most uh, I would say uh, global cities in mainland China, of course, in the world, what I would argue most important market. So I think uh, that's clearly uh, the direction of where the FTZ and where Shanghai are going. Uh, compared with cities like Berlin, Paris, New York, why why to Shanghai? So. Uh, that's a very fair question. Uh, Della Bradstreet of um, of the Financial Times uh, wrote an article two years ago in the FT saying about the importance of MBAs being in major cities, major global cities, because of the importance of, of top-tier schools that maintain the relationships with the big corporate companies and the big companies. And the closer you are, the better the relationships. And obviously, I agree with with that re uh, line of reasoning from Della Bradshaw. And I would say that, obviously, if you compare it to Berlin, Paris, New York, I mean, again, the opinions may be a bit subjective, but uh, if you're talking about Berlin or Paris, you're experiencing growth uh, in Europe, which is around zero or half a percent or, or one percent even in Germany this year. I think growth is slowing down significantly. Uh, New York, okay, well, I mean, New York is a global city. It's a very mature global city. Uh, Shanghai is only about 20 or, or 30 years old, and it's, uh, I would say, being a protagonist in globalization. So you can go to a very mature and, I'd say, very diverse city like New York that most things have been done uh, or, or been done or, or been there, done that. Or you can um, go to a city like Shanghai where everything's only beginning and everything's transforming every day. Uh, definitely not a mature market. So uh, this is, uh, you know, as you place your bet, uh, ask yourself, where will New York, where will Berlin, where will Paris be in 5, uh, 10, 15, 20 years? I have my own um, reasoning opinions on it. I don't want to go too much into my personal reasoning. But ask your peers and uh, ask other professionals and ask other CEOs, you know, where are they placing their bets? Are they placing it in Europe? Are they placing it in, in mature markets like the U.S.? Are they facing it in, in Brazil, which was, you know, the kind of um, uh, very optimistic uh, market for many years, or in Russia, okay? Or are they facing it in China, which is not only the world's largest market, but definitely one of the most diversified markets uh, in both industries, okay? And uh, obviously in, um, I would think, an openness to, to bring in new technologies and new companies. 
So don't take my word for it. Read, ask, and see where the trends are growing, and then place your bet uh, there. And one of the advantages of going to a global career, uh, global business school, excuse me, is that you can uh, hedge your bets. So not only will you be getting a, a global, globally recognized degree, you will be getting a China debt, and then you will also be getting the opportunities that we'll talk about in a moment of the overseas electives of going to top tier exchange schools like Wharton or Kellogg or London Business School, as well as um, using their networks. And, and we'll talk a little bit about the career opportunities from those uh, those other schools as well. Okay, I convinced you, uh, Jason. Okay, and uh, let's let's move on, uh, and I'll also answer some other questions while we while we uh, while we. So we talked about the Integrated Chinese Strategy Project, and with the 18 month as well as the 12 month program, you do have an, uh, an option for a summer internship, and the 12 month program is a bit shorter. And our CDC does help, although it does not guarantee uh, with opportunities both in Shanghai and China as well as abroad. And we do encourage the students to use their own resources as well to find a, uh, you know, the, the internship opportunity that's right for them. Uh, especially with a new function that they want to try out or a new industry, this is a great opportunity when you're thinking about a career switch. Um, and the what when we talk about a full-time program, we talk about transformational learning. So it's uh, the focus on China. We have a China uh, different China modules uh, throughout the year that are focused specifically on China-related topics. Although you will have China cases in, in most of your classes as well. We have the leadership support shop with Sam Edison, as well as the exchange program, intercultural team building, really a, a plethora of activities which we'll talk about, which make uh, this a truly transformational experience. Very quickly, I'll, I'll pass this through uh, really quick, but if you are considering if you come from specialized areas, we do have three coordinated degree programs with top Ivy League schools. So if you want to go in the world of NGOs and government, uh, I encourage you to look at the uh, Fletcher Coordinated Degree with the MBA and the Master's in Law Diplomacy from the Fletcher School at Tufts in, in Boston. This is a two and a half year degree uh, for those people interested in, in that area of work. Uh, for those in hospitality, um, just uh, this week I've heard of one hotel company, leading hotel company in the world that's going to build 150 hotels in mainland China within the next 10 years. That's their plan. So there's a, a, a real fit for talent for people in the hospitality industry, and we partnered with Cornell for a dual degree. And for those uh, coming with uh, from healthcare, and we all know about the healthcare opportunities, the growth of of the healthcare sector in China, the growth obviously of the aging population in, in China and other parts of Asia. So we've partnered with uh, with um, John Hopkins for a dual degree MBA and a master's in public health. And just send me an email if you want more, uh, if you have any more questions regarding uh, those programs. Well, very quickly, and uh, this is related um, to, you know, why China, why Shanghai, why Global Business School is your opportunity to leverage your opportunities. So uh, let's say you're not 100% sure about China. You want to come here, but you don't know if you want to work or stay in China. You don't know if you want to go to work in other areas of the world but work with China. So the exchange opportunity gives you um, um, some time to further, you know, see other areas of the world, whether it's Europe or North America or Asia, areas like uh, Australia or Southeast Asia, where we have partner schools, um, to be in a different environment, also have fun, and as well as use of career services and alumni opportunities from those schools. So China's number one business school has the advantages of being partnered with the leading business schools around the world, uh, some that are very difficult to get into and some perhaps that are very expensive to get into, you can uh, go through uh, our exchange at no cost to you. So uh, Wharton, INSEAD, we're only one of the three schools in the world to partner with INSEAD for exchange. Uh, Kellogg, uh, Berkeley, London Business School, UCLA, yes, uh, um, Melbourne Business School in Australia, HKUSD in Hong Kong, as well as about 30 other partners. Uh, are the options. Normally we have around 120 slots on offer. Uh, normally about 100 uh, students every year demand or, or would like to go on an uh, exchange. So that means if you want to go on exchange, you will. Uh, obviously the more competitive schools, you'll have to bid through both based on your GPA, the first two terms, as well as um, an essay which you'll have to write.
Okay. Let me ask, uh, answer another question from Felipe. Uh, regarding Chinese language skills, what are SHSK level do you think is achievable for the average international student after 18 months? And it's great on uh, enchanting one's uh, prospects. So I think this is very important for our non-Chinese uh, viewers at the moment. They're probably asking this question. And I'll kind of give you a little bit of a preview uh, to our uh, career section. Speaking um, Mandarin is very important, and speaking it well is very important if you want to land a, uh, a job in, in China. It's not mandatory for all jobs. We do have around 50% of our international students who stay in China after they graduate and find a job here, and many of them don't speak uh, Mandarin well. They'll just have basic Mandarin. Um, as to your question, what kind of Chinese language skills you can expect after the program, I would say to be realistic, start your Chinese learning before you get leaves because during the MBA you'll be extremely busy. Uh, we do offer the intensive course, which is a kind of survival Chinese course uh, before you start for a month, and then you'll have opportunities to have Chinese language courses twice a week for free during the MBA. To be uh, frank and realistic, I mean, don't expect leaps there because you need to invest a lot of time in it to improve Mandarin or to learn Mandarin. And um, if you don't have the background, it's not an easy language. So be realistic with what you'll be able to learn the first year, uh, taking in the rest of the workflow that you'll have uh, with the MBA. Nevertheless, there have been many um, students who are extremely disciplined, and I, I stress that, that have been able to sell in Mandarin during the program and get jobs using their Mandarin afterward. Now, if you don't have Mandarin or proficiency Mandarin after you graduate, that's okay. I mean, you, what I would say is you need to make an extra effort to find opportunities. And we have, um, you know, um, students this year that I know of, uh, our alumni that are working in companies like Google, Volkswagen, Ford, Hire, which is the largest uh, Chinese uh, consumer goods company in the world, uh, um, appliances company in the world. Uh, are all our international students which aren't speaking any Mandarin and are working there uh, in mainland China. So the opportunities are there, but they're limited. I mean, if you're looking to do a sales or marketing job uh, in mainland China to the Chinese market, I'm not talking about uh, to, to uh, market abroad, then you'll definitely need to buy you know, uh, Chinese or Mandarin uh, for that position. Uh, but other uh, types of functions... Uh, don't necessarily require Mandarin in some companies. And we tell you, you know, our international students who want to work in China after they graduate to start their job search early and to be very disciplined about uh, the job search as well as networking as well as meeting different company HR officers and, and uh, talking with as many people as our alumni and, and professors and so on and so forth to find the right opportunity for them. Okay, so definitely... Uh, I would say challenging, but definitely not impossible. I have another question here. Some person said Shanghai is a great hardware, but the software is not not great. What about that question? Oh, interesting question. Can you be more specific? I'll try to answer. Uh, I can answer you. Uh, I can answer you a little bit. Uh, what do you mean by hardware and software in terms of the high tech industry? Let me know, and and uh, and I'll be. Um, able to answer you uh, more specifically. And try to keep your questions also general, uh, so they apply to all the different uh, different people that are viewing online and whatever specific questions you have, I'll give you my email and you can send them to me. So please try to give your, your questions uh, as general as possible so they can interest all our viewers. Um, again, I think it's important. If you ask yourself why a full-time MBA, uh, to understand all the benefits. Uh, and this gives you around 18 months to really focus on yourself, focus on your personal development, focus on your professional development, have some fun and challenge yourself to the limit. And you can do that through the different strategy projects that we offer, the signature events like uh, this week we'll have Innovate China, which is an annual ACE competition we hold at our school, um, although we've also sent many um, of our own MBA delegations to other business schools around the world. But normally it's, it's paid, uh, fully paid and expensive. Uh, by the, the, the other schools, so you can go and, and, and compete with uh, other students from top-tier schools. And in the case of Innovate China, this year we have Tencent, which is the founder of WeChat. You know, it's uh, China's leading kind of WhatsApp 
Stack Application, which is funding uh, the Innovate China competition. And one of our American students, Kevin Shimota, you might have read about him in Post and Quan. Uh, recently have a very nice article I encourage you to read. He came from Bo Boeing in Seattle, and he's leading the Innovate China uh, case competition. So he went abroad to Stanford, I think to MIT, and Harvard, if I'm not mistaken, to talk to their students to have them come to Shanghai and compete here. And essentially, Innovate China means these are case competitions where Chinese companies are trying to innovate and trying to integrate into the different services and products into the global economy. And uh, different issues and problems are given to the different students, and each one has to give their uh, presentation in front of um, uh, a group of judges. And this is essentially what Innovation is all about. Uh, and it's an extremely exciting example of the things that are available to you at the MBA. We have almost um, 40 clubs from business to pleasure, from wine club to entrepreneurship club, which is the most popular one, to Women's uh, Women Leadership Club and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and if you don't have one that you like, you can open one yourself if you have enough people. So uh, definitely a lot of opportunities to explore your capabilities. Uh, we have different industry forums and seminars, so real estate, agriculture, uh, biomed, all these type of forums take place here at Steve's with leading experts both from China and globally. And uh, one of you asked the advantages of, of Shanghai uh, compared to other cities. Uh, I'll make the case that because we're we're probably one of the hottest cities uh, at the moment for business and for the foreseeable future, many of the big business leaders, industry uh, uh, heads come here to Shanghai. And many of them, if they come to Shanghai, they'll come to Seed. So we had last year, uh, Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, with the launching of LinkedIn China, came to Shanghai and came to to do a presentation about, you know, um, uh, innovation and also about the LinkedIn platform and so on. So it, it, it really is an amazing uh, place to hear different people from different industries come and speak. And, and they're all here and they all come here and normally they'll, they'll come by and, and uh, you can come to weekly uh, industry forums and seminars in different areas. Lastly, I want to mention we have uh, our alumni network and our mentoring program, which is an optional program that allows you to be connected to many of our executive uh, EMB alumni in, in senior positions uh, worldwide or, or in China. And they uh, help in, in coaching on your career, career direction, also help you with networking and so on. And many of our students find this extremely valuable. Okay, so uh, Jason is asking us a very provocative question, which I very much enjoy. I won't hide them. So he's saying, hard way I mean in the transportation, infrastructure, city construction, these are all great, but software like the quality of the personnel, the degree of civilization, order is uh, not a part. So I have to smile because I think I mentioned this before. Uh, uh, I think Shanghai is one of the safest cities uh, on earth. Uh, you'll also find uh, that the level of English here for Asia and China is, is quite high, although, you know, taxi drivers, for example, don't speak English. That's where you have to have your survival Chinese. Uh, Shanghai is a very global city. You have something like, uh, I'm not sure about the exact number, 350,000 expats, like I said, uh, all of very high caliber, or many of them very high caliber living here. Uh, it's a very civilized city, a very, I would say, you'll find probably an extraordinary amount of networking events outside of the school, all the different uh, AmCam and, and EuroCam and all the different countries here have a lot of business events. Again, I, I like to uh, make, you know, the importance here of whether you're Chinese or or um, international. If you're going to do business in China, you're going to be in Shanghai. So a lot of these top caliber people are here. And uh, especially there, you're around C is uh, very much an international area, so you'll find all the different types of restaurants, whether you have two minutes from here, an Irish restaurant, a Mexican restaurant, a, a uh, 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 American, what else, Indian, they're all two minutes walk from Seeps, and it's very much an international city. The metro is extremely efficient, so if you want to go to school in London, you can pay, I think, around, if I'm not mistaken, the equivalent of seven U.S. dollars on a on a very old and outdated metro system that, that pops, uh, that gets jammed about every other day or every other hour. Uh, sorry for those Londoners, I don't want to offend you, but you complain about it all the time as well. Or you can come to Shanghai, 
and pay the equivalent of about 50 US cents to ride uh, in the metro. And uh, I can tell you, I was not, haven't been stuck on it, not even once, uh, or haven't seen it break down and go once. And I'm being absolutely open. So uh, you be the judge. Speak to, to our alumni and our students, and they can tell you their own personal experiences. But uh, it's a legitimate question, and I, and I hope you you do speak to as many people as possible so you get a really um, clear picture of what Shanghai is all about. Uh, before we finish, I just wanted to mention that we'll be offering a uh, boot camp for those of you who want to learn about Shanghai and see what the school is about, the city is about, China is about, both if you're from China or from abroad, you're welcome to the program. We have around 60 uh, spaces open. We just launched it last week. And I highly encourage you to sign up. It's subsidized by us, so it's about equivalent to about 1,000 euros, and we give you a special early bird discount if you sign up within the next few weeks. And uh, the program is just amazing. It's full of uh, classes, activities, uh, company visits, talking with career counselors, talking with our students, alumni, and experience Shanghai to the fullest. We have a dinner on the uh, on the pond on the river. Uh, I just looked at our my week this morning. We have a group from last year's uh, boot campers. They're still, um, I would say, about half of them are active on this forum and talking to each other. And a few of them have already uh, have applied to the school and been accepted, and they're already organizing a dinner. So, very very close knit group from over. 22, 23 countries uh, presented last year. I encourage you to sign up this year. You'll love it. And the cost is all included uh, except for flights and transfers. And it's a really a once in a lifetime experience. So, so I encourage you to, to look into that option. Can most foreigners speak the Mandarin uh, before they take the MBA program? And you know how well can they speak? I would say most of our international students don't speak Mandarin before they come to the program. It depends on the year. This year we had quite a few that did. But in previous years, I would say the majority or, or vast majority didn't speak any Mandarin. So it, it really depends. It's not a criteria. And like before, uh, it's not necessarily the, uh, an absolutely necessary part to finding a job in China, although it's very important to have. And it makes your life much easier. So if you do consider... Uh, working here, try to start learning Mandarin at home as soon as possible. And uh, although, again, um, if, if you're not in, I would say, um, absolutely adamant about staying in China after you graduate, then then by all means, you know, Mandarin is is not necessary to feel comfortable at the school or to feel comfortable in in uh, Shanghai. Okay, well, we another question about entrepreneurship. We'll, we'll leave for the entrepreneurship part in a moment. Okay, and I'll get back to some of the other questions uh, you're asking me uh, toward the end. So we talked a little bit about that beyond the classroom experience, uh, which makes the the full-time MBA so unique uh, anywhere in, in any full any top tier school, and and I think especially at CES because you're in a very exciting city, a really a non-stop city with a lot uh, to offer both on campus and outside of campus. We have a, a very, I would say, a huge campus for a business school, which we recently expanded. There's a lot of different uh, areas to do different things, and, and uh, we've just um, inaugurated the new uh, campus wing with its 800 seat auditorium. So uh, the campus, both on and off, uh, the experience is what, what makes it quite interesting. Much more interesting, I would say, than being in a rural farm area where many business schools are located. Uh, uh, that keeps you really in, in the heart of things. I want to ask the question regarding entrepreneurship. I would say that Thieves is definitely uh, one of the strongest business schools in the area of entrepreneurship of any business school in the world. We have four professors dedicated to the subject. This year we we offer uh, two in-house kind of fees, which are all, having offer more than 100 million U.S. dollars for alumni uh, and student graduates who want to start their own business. And uh, starting last year, we have a new entrepreneurship concentration in addition to our finance and marketing concentration where you're able to take up to, I think, eight electives during the second year that are focusing on areas of entrepreneurship. So this makes it, I think, a, a very uh, uh, 
in school for those who want to start their own business, coupled with the fact that China has enormous opportunities for entrepreneurs, both international as well as our Chinese graduates. Uh, we have uh, many of our international students have started their own business, and of course our Chinese students, many students form mixed teams and, and start a business in new areas. So just to give you an example, we have actually uh, Devin Nixon, which is I think the uh, Grand nephew of Richard Nixon from the U.S. He's working here in China with his Agritech company, and he's coupled with some of our MBA Chinese alumni. We have uh, the founder of Sherpas, which is uh, based in Shanghai's leading food delivery service. is an American. Uh, is very successful here, and some of our Chinese and Korean and Indian alumni teamed up to start a, a online fashion business. And they're currently working on building uh, their model, model and monetizing it. So many, these are just a few examples of many opportunities. One of our alumni who worked for a buyer from Germany uh, has teamed up with our um, Chinese alumni and has a company to help um, European medical technology companies enter the Chinese market and get all the necessary assistance both in uh, getting the licensing as well as uh, sales into the market. So many, many opportunities here, uh, which makes the market extremely uh, interesting if you want to start your own business. And uh, finally, one of the most, I think, interesting uh, questions or, or important questions that many of our candidates have is what type of career opportunities can I expect at and in Shanghai and in China after I graduate? And obviously, this bit if you're Chinese or if you're international. Um, for our Chinese students, um, obviously there are, I think, uh, many, many possibilities in all different industries, uh, whether we're talking about, and I would encourage you to look at our uh, career report, whether it's healthcare, consumer goods, um, energy, uh, consulting, finance, we have probably one of the biggest representation both in student body as well as recruiting companies and any other business school in the world. Many of the top tier schools you'd be surprised but tend to focus or many of their uh, graduates focus on consulting and uh, finance uh, because we represent a very diverse market which this time we have a very diverse representation both of students as well as uh, recruiting companies. And this is too far, Chinese graduates as well as our international graduates. So, um, but um, again, if, if you're an international student, you do have to look a little bit about your level of, of Mandarin and where are my, my strengths that I can bring to the Chinese uh, economy where, uh, and this is true, I think, for someone who's studying out of, anyone out of his whole market has to think, you know, what am I bringing that into China that's a strength? What do I know, I think, better than the, um, you know, the, the many other locals can offer that make me stick out and why why would that recruiter take me and and, uh, and this is the, the kind of work you have to do. I mean, it's true for anyone, I think, going to, you know, to study, whether if you're Indian and want to study in, in the U.S. or whether you're uh, American and you want to work in Europe, uh, there's different, um, you know, different uh, issues with finding a job out of your home country. In China, uh, just to make it clear, to get the uh, work license is relatively easy. So if a company makes you an offer, it's relatively easy to work and stay in China. That's not an issue, unlike uh, what many um, international uh, students find in the U.S. or Europe. Nevertheless, the, the language is the only issue which you need to study and understand because it can be somewhat of a, of a barrier. I encourage for both Chinese and international students to look at our uh, career report. We have uh, around 85% of our graduates doing a career switch. As I said, they, they change either career uh, function or uh, industry or a combination of, of both, uh, which is quite, quite I would say, promising for those who want to make that uh, change in their in their career direction or, or improvement or upgrade in their career direction. Uh, um, our weighted salary, if you look according to Financial Times, three years after graduation is equivalent to close to 150,000 US uh, dollars. We had uh, um, nearly a 92% placement rate last year in a, in a challenging market, so this is very good if you compare our rate to other business schools or top tier schools. Again, try to look at the um, at the uh, career report in terms of where our students were placed, what industries, what functions, 
very important. It's a bit tedious, but it's important that you look into these things when you're comparing the different schools. We had a, a close to 1,100 job posting. That means uh, the average student had access to, on average, more than six postings that were uh, perhaps relevant to, to him or her. And uh, the salary percent increase is, is close to doubling uh, your, your salary on average. So you can expect on average, I mean, some make uh, less and some make much more. But once you leave SEEPS, uh, you can, uh, in many ways, uh, double your salary. And uh, if you look at return on investment, uh, the fact that our tuition as a top tier school is about half of many U.S. schools and, and two thirds about many European schools. Um, if you look at our weighted salary, if you look at cost of living here in China, the return on investment is probably one of the highest and quickest out of any business school. Again, something you should do and compare with your due diligence. And living costs in Shanghai, uh, although are going are increasing all the time, still tend to be lower than other major cities such as New York or London, especially when it comes to the metro and taxis, like I said, as well as if you can live on campus and eat on campus, uh, plan on spending about 800 to 1,000 US dollars a month average, although if you like to go out at night and, and have a lot of fun, then, then that might uh, go up substantially. Okay. Um, in terms of placement, we have uh, a CDC, which is one of the most extensive, a career services office, one, one of the most extensive in the world, I would say, again, of, any of most business schools. We have seven uh, consultants, which are professionals in their area or in their industry, or are concentrated on different regions. And um, uh, so we have nine people working at the CDC, helping around 160, 180 students every year. And that's quite a high ratio. Uh, so they uh, offer uh, CDC events almost every week. They bring in companies, multinationals, as well as Chinese companies, companies like Amazon, Apple, Ford, uh, Jaguar, uh, Johnson and Johnson, uh, Road Pharmaceuticals, and so on, so, so forth. They all come here and make presentations, so you can be exposed to different industries and be able to network with different HR uh, directors from different uh, multinationals, as well as Chinese companies. They offer you one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions and coaching. Uh, they help critique your CVs, obviously, and get it ready for the market. Also, after graduation. We have an annual job fair. This last job fair was in um, was in January, where about 80 companies came to see so a hotel nearby, uh, and and were able to have uh, our students were able to have uh, one on one interviews with the HR directors uh, from companies from all over the world, all over China. In seminars and workshops to build your soft skills are also part of this transformation that I've been talking about. So. Uh, definitely a lot of opportunities there. And this is a, another point I want to highlight of the importance of, of um, oh, if somebody uh, is asking a relevant question to the company events, are the company events in English or Chinese? Uh, some are in Chinese. Uh, mostly I would say for companies that are recruiting people, mainly for Chinese posts, uh, but most tend to be in English. So the CDC here would list if uh, beforehand if it's a Chinese event or an English event. Again, the majority of cases would be in English. And again, uh, the positions, it depends on the company and the function. So if you're going for marketing positions into mainland China, don't expect it to be uh, in English, whereas other uh, opportunities are definitely uh, possible and available in English. And I definitely encourage our international students to do the more networking and talk to the eight bar directors that are presenting at these different um, different conference properties, both in China, as well as, excuse me, the Asian headquarters for a lot of these multinationals. And I forgot to mention, every year we offer uh, rear tracks both to Singapore and Hong Kong. So we have very uh, close contacts to a lot of the Asian headquarters of many of these uh, multinationals that don't have them located in, in Shanghai or have their subsidiaries in those areas of Southeast Asia. And uh, I also forgot to mention that we have over 70 uh, leadership development programs uh, offered last year. Normally, they're offered every year by leading multinational companies, uh, which are, I would say, the majority are English positions, rotational, rotational positions for companies like um, like uh, Microsoft, like 
sell oil. We fire our our um, our um, MBAs uh, normally every year, and uh, they rotate them between China, Southeast Asia, uh, Europe. Uh, uh, just at our uh, Munich fair we had last week, one of our uh, Chinese uh, uh, alumni that graduated here is currently working with Siemens in Germany. So a lot of interesting possibilities there. And normally these these um, are, are quite well paid. So actually we had our European students displaced. One is an AB InBev, I believe is in Brussels, although he's negotiating with him that he wants to be placed back in China. This is our, one of our Spanish students. And actually another Spanish student just is also in, in Novartis. And I think he's currently based out of Shanghai, if I'm not mistaken, or or uh, or uh, he's starting his position in Europe. I'm not sure, but uh, these are the top types of opportunities that are out there. And again, a lot of these multinational companies are thirsty for people that have China knowledge. Whether your first position is in China or outside of China, they know that sooner or later um, you'll you'll be affected by China in your position one way or the other through manufacturing, R&D that's happening here, or the huge market that they want to sell into. So that's uh, another important point of, of why Shanghai and, and why, why China. Um, I want to make another strong point of emphasis. I mean, uh, for most of you in the last two, three decades, the thought that innovation started in the U.S. or in Europe, uh, you have to start to, to get used to, I think, uh, what's the new paradigm. And I know... Uh, for many people who are working here in China, I've been talking to many of the multinational companies that are launching new products are now launching their their new flagship products first in China and then into other markets like the U.S. and Europe. The velocity and the pace of change in the Chinese market is so important and so fast that actually, um, you know, uh, Companies now are looking to the China market to, to um, you know, to essentially uh, plan their global strategy, and this is a huge change, a huge change uh, than what we've seen in the last 10 or 20 years. And this is where China knowledge and China <clears throat> experience is important wherever you plan to live and work. Okay, and the same goes for the Chinese companies who are wanting to to globalize. Uh, they're going to be buying up. Uh, foreign companies, they're going to be merging, they're going to be um, uh, uh, essentially everywhere. Uh, and they've already uh, been starting this, it's only the beginning. So uh, you're going to be affected by China, uh, whether you like it or not, almost wherever you are. And it's those people that have this knowledge that are becoming increasingly valuable for for multinational companies and Chinese companies. Okay. So, um, and I wanted to talk to you about the Career Reciprocity Program, which is another, I think, big benefit of being a, a global school. So, you're not sure whether you want to focus on China, although you know that China is going to affect you. You want to be connected, and we'll talk about our alumni network to China throughout your career because you understand the importance of China in the economy globally over the long term, not the short or medium term. Uh, but you also want to leverage your opportunities and possibilities and be flexible. So. Uh, we have the internship possibility in the summer. That's the one possibility to get a job offer. You have the um, alumni network, which I'll talk about in a moment. You have the exchange opportunity where you can use the career services and alumni network of our partner schools. And you also have the, uh, the career checks, uh, which we take you to other places in China and abroad, like Singapore and Hong Kong, to find opportunities as well with global headquarters or regional headquarters. And then you have the Career Reciprocity Program, either Harvard Business School, London Business School, INSEAD, or ESE, uh, to use their career services uh, if you're located uh, at their locations abroad for one day and talk to their counselors and use their uh, online platform to find opportunities. And how many uh, programs do you know in the world that are partnered with a school like Harvard Business School? And again, this is an advantage of being China's leading business school uh, to have access to these top schools, both in exchange schools like Wharton or Kellogg or, or uh, uh, LBS or uh, HKUST, and then uh, schools in their reciprocity program like Harvard Business School. And this gives you, uh, I think, a very, um, um, I would say, diversified way to leverage your career, both in the short term and your opportunities, medium term, 
and long term. Uh, this is uh, just a quick list of a very short list of the different companies that CUDA keeps, okay, both at the top there company presentations and through our online platform. And I think, again, one of the most important things of any program is alumni network. So it's the relationships that you'll create while in the MBA and, uh, and cultivate, as well as the people you can connect with uh, while after you graduate. So, uh, again, uh, think where you'll be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Will you be in a business development position? Will you be in an R&D position? Will you be in a general management position? More likely not, you'll be working with China in some way or another. And it might be the Chinese company that's coming in to buy you or to merge with you or to invest in your company. It might be the Chinese company that's still manufacturing and exporting to you, whether you're abroad. It might be, uh, again, the Chinese company, if you're Chinese or international, that's globalizing and that needs the talent. For all these, you need a strong network because... At the end of the day, your alumni network are your future employers, your future investors, buyers, suppliers, partners, and so on. And um, an important aspect is not only the size of the network, you have the most prestigious and largest network of any business school in mainland China, but also the level and seniority of these people. So while other programs and other schools have very large MBA programs, uh, much larger than their executive ed program, at CIBS, it's the opposite. We have a smaller MBA and much larger EMBA with more, with the largest EMBA program in the world of around a thousand students a year. And this means that the network is very top heavy. That means that these people, once they graduate, are already in, in management or once they're even students, are already in, in, in top management positions. Uh, CEO, CFO, CTOs, CEOs of leading Chinese and international multinational firms, both in Asia and abroad. Okay, and this is very important when you consider of the opportunities available and the people you can access both when at the school and after you graduate. Okay. Um, let's try to get a little bit of uh, questions before we finish off. I know we're, we're going a bit over time, but I, I thank everybody uh, for uh, staying on here. So let me read some of the questions. Um, Uh, one of uh, the questions from our Indian uh, viewers, how many of the percent that end up in China intensely choose not to, and how flexible with the help of SIBs are they in finding a job somewhere else in Asia? It's a very tough question to answer in terms of percentage, but uh, again, like I said, uh, some people didn't manage to perhaps find a job in China. That's true. I would say the majority that wanted to and were insistent upon it uh, did find one. And I can give you two very frank and open cases. We have two European students that didn't initially find a job in Asia. They graduated about a year and a half ago. They went back home, and both of them, within a year, one found a job in Volkswagen in Beijing. Again, no no Mandarin. And another one found a job uh, recently through one of our alumni uh, working in Google in Europe. He gave, uh, was able to find a job in Google in Shanghai. One of our Indian students... Uh, he had uh, personal issues. He went back to India and is uh, he graduated last year, and just back to uh, Hinkle in uh, in Shanghai. He also had offers from a, a Hong Kong company, as well. She was a very big networker, so he had several possibilities as well. But so it really depends on the industry background, your function, what you want to do, and how you know how proactive you are in looking for opportunities. It really is so different on a case by case basis. But if you want China, and as an Indian student that you're asking this, we had, I think, a couple Indians, uh, non manus speakers placed at four last year, and other uh, companies in mainland China, the opportunities are there, okay? And like I said, if you're not in your home market, you'll always find challenges, okay? Uh, so, like I said, it's, it's Mandarin for China, it's used for other, for other countries. Uh, you just have to know and be focused, and if you want it, you can find it. And uh, what I always tell almost as soon is have a backup plan ready. So if your first plan is, is uh, doesn't uh, work out, you know what what are your other opportunities, uh, you know, um, ready, and and uh, perhaps you can you know involve China some way in your country or or in a third country. You mentioned many graduates started their own business after graduation. What kind of business do they do? I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, that really, really depends. Uh, the, you know, again, we don't have a huge critical mass of people starting businesses yet. There's still a handful every year. 
but they are very much online. I mean, this is a very strong component here in, in China. As well as areas like you mentioned, services, um, agri-tech, uh, biomed, and so forth. The area of services, I mean, we had Stephen Roche, was, which is one of the, uh, um, uh, I think the former chairman of Morgan Stanley uh, was here, gave a very eloquent speech, and he was talking about the, the dollar bonanza of services that is, are just about to start in, in, in China. The whole services mar market in, in China, um, are still, uh, you know, in, in, in its incipient stage. There's so much to develop and do here, and things are changing so fast. Uh, there's so many incredible opportunities, uh, both online and offline, in, in this area of business uh, that you really cannot find any anywhere else. Okay, so I think the the, the interesting things are are really just beginning. And uh, if you're creative, if you find a good team, and I think I tell many of uh, Applicants, there's no better time than the MBA to find your future business partners because you're going to be side to side with with people from all over the world, and you're going to know how they react under pressure and under time and the level of integrity and and their personalities probably more than you will in any other situation anywhere in the world. So or any any other time in your your career life. So take advantage of it and 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 also use the opportunity here if you want to start your own business. To, to think of, of opportunities in the team you'd want to do it with. Okay, so hope that, that uh, answers the question. In terms of finding a job somewhere else in Asia, which you're asking, like I said, we do have the career tracks and we do have a network within Asia. Also, obviously, our alumni network within Asia. But again, our strong, uh, in, I would say, um, uh, competency is our, our multinationals doing business in China or Chinese companies in China globalizing, as well as the different or the 70 um, or so leadership development positions which we have, which are equivalent to almost any other business school, as well as opportunities that we connect them with, uh, you know, uh, offices in uh, for Southeast Asia and APAC region, okay? Can you bring your family to the housing or do we need to get separate housing outside? This is a question from Leo. Uh, you can uh, not bring your family to the housing, uh, but there are affordable apartments outside within walking distance from campus. I would say rental can range anywhere between 500 to 1,000 US dollars for a decent apartment of around anywhere between 70 to 100 square meters, okay? Even a bit more expensive, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you're looking even around 1,200 US dollars, uh, sometimes for a 100 square meter apartment in this area of Shanghai. If you're looking for the city center to, to be in the thick of things, I mean, you can pay twice or three times more. So uh, Shanghai in terms of real estate is an expensive city, although rental is still lower than cities like San Francisco or New York uh, or some other European capitals like London. Okay. So good question there. Um, I think unless uh, most of you have some other questions, I'll, I'll just uh, move to the end. And I, I thank you all for sticking with us here. Um, we have, um, I think this receives one of the most generous in terms of financial aid, again, out of uh, many other business schools. So this year we offer 70 merit-based scholarships throughout the first, second, and third round. Most of them have been given away, although we do have uh, some significant scholarships left for the third round. So if you haven't applied and you have your GMAT ready, please apply by next week. And presently, we do have some merit-based scholarships. Normally, when you apply, we'll uh, we'll look at your GMAT, we'll look at your background, uh, career perspectives, um, your GPA, uh, where you studied, what you want to do, your essays, obviously your interview is very important. And we have a, a step interview if you're located abroad and an uh, inside interview if you're near Shanghai. Uh, on that interview, uh, normally it's with uh, someone from faculty and one of our administrators who will be interviewed by two people. And all those are, are integrated into giving your final score. And then uh, normally, on average, about two out of every five applicants will receive financial aid. Financial aid, on average, can range from, I would say, um, 35% up to 65% um, of your tuition, which they rest at or close to around um, 62,000 US dollars. Uh, Euros, dollars now are almost the same. 
ironically, um, which I think are fairly reasonable tuition compared to other top tier schools. And then um, around two out of five will receive some kind of scholarship. We do have some external scholarships, some which can cover up to 100%, but those are only a couple. I, I think that it's reasonable to think that uh, your scholarship will be uh, in between the range that I mentioned. And then we have um, several loan opportunities uh, to finance up to 100% of your MBA tuition, uh, either through the Prodigy third party loan or we have a few um, international loans for um, from CBS itself, which can finance up to 50% of your tuition, and for Chinese students or India students, as well as uh, uh, now students coming from Peru and Germany, we have uh, partnerships with local banks uh, there to provide you up to full amount of uh as well. So uh, if you want to do an MBA, I don't think that money should be something that uh, necessarily is uh, stops you from doing so. Necessarily, uh, into consideration that you should have some savings before considering about a top tier program. You don't want to come here uh, without having any savings because there are a lot of uh, uh, spending that goes along with doing a full time uh, program. Okay. Um, will campus housing be available for those attending the Chinese pre course in July? Uh, in, uh, yes, it will be available, and you can talk to our admissions uh, office with Angela, and she can give you all the details. Okay. So I can understand you were accepted to the program, so congratulations. For foreign students for scholarships, the companies are Chinese only. The corporates prefer foreign students for scholarships. So the company, it depends on the company and who you are. So I would say some uh, look at the requirements and, and what type of company uh, required. Most of the scholarships are open both to international and Chinese students. Uh, some are open to, to international students. Some are open uh, just to Chinese or there's a preference there. Look at the company and look at the 30 party scholarship and, and uh, you know decide on your own in terms of what you see the possibilities are of whether to apply or not. Uh, but, um, the majority of the 70 scholarships that we offer every year do come from SEEP, so there's no extra work needed uh, when applying, and you just simply uh, are placed in the pool right when apply, uh, turning in your, your admissions application and notified upon admission whether you received one or not. Okay, so unless I have any further questions, uh, okay, we do have some people eager to ask more, so I'll stay in line. For all of you that were on here, I'll send you right now my email. Let me, um, in case you have any questions, please send me your specific questions to croy at cibs.edu, and I'll be glad to answer them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We can even set up a time uh, with one of our admissions consultants to speak one-on-one -on, -one on Skype or phone, and I'll stay on for the next few minutes if anyone has any additional questions to answer them online. So I, ha I thank everyone for sticking on there. We really had a very nice showing, and we'll have this uh, also um, placed online. And I thank you for joining us and uh, your interest in GIDS. Um, so somebody's asking regarding, uh, you're welcome. Somebody is asking, because it is the third round season, are there any disadvantages to applying in round three? And because of my personal reason, I had to apply in the third round. Okay, I mean, the, the, the round three is not the ideal round. Uh, most, or many of the scholarships have already been given away. Um, as well as, uh, you know, positions, uh, yet if, if you apply or if you want to apply, I would definitely encourage you to do so. I mean, don't, uh, don't hesitate or don't procrastinate. If you want to do an MBA and you feel it's the right time, well, by all, uh, all means, please apply. There are still many scholarships that we give off that, uh, in some cases are declined, so we will pass them out into the next round. So there are still opportunities left and we will be notified uh, of those. Okay, so definitely. Okay. One gentleman is asking. Okay, uh, that they've, uh, that they've emailed one to, um, uh, an email to one of our admissions, uh, admissions, uh, consultants. They haven't gotten a reply back. Uh, in the case of, um, 
of the person you mentioned, I can tell you who's very, very um, always tries to answer. It sometimes happens that it might have been overlooked. So yes, feel free to send it to me, your question to me, and I can answer it. And then I'll shoot you Stephen as well, or if you so no problem at all. Uh, I apologize for that. That sometimes happens. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it. So thank you very much. We'll uh, close the evening. I uh, thank you all for hanging on, and I wish you the best of luck. And I do, um, if you have any more questions regarding the summer boot camp, please send me a note. And we definitely, I definitely encourage you to apply into company to Shanghai. For those of you that had doubts over Shanghai, I think they will all be, um, they will all be answered during this uh, this uh, boot camp, and I think in most cases very positively. So I wish you the best uh, in success. Do your due diligence. Ask as many questions as you want from us and other schools you're applying to. Definitely speak to the students. Visit the campus if you can. Speak to alumni. Speak to our career uh, services consultants as well. They're also available. And then make the right decision to you. So I thank you very much. Hope we can see your application uh, by the end of March. Uh, for those uh, who are not ready, see you at the boot camp, or hopefully we'll see your application next fall, starting in September. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.